So stream is <laughs> so welcome to our uh, February 2020 meetup uh, .NET meetup in Vienna, uh, presented by the .NET Devs AT Austria. Um, Short, um, the .NET Devs AT is a non-profit association whose pur purpose is to spread the knowledge and experience about usage of .NET technologies. Speaking is hard today. Um, we have a website. Let's take the other point. A website. We are on Twitch, uh, on, on Twitter. We are streaming currently on Twitch. Hopefully everything is working today with audio and bandwidth. And all of the recording that were successful will land then on YouTube. Um, I will post all of the links also in the meetup event. Some of them are already there. Here are some QR codes. So first, thank you for coming. Thanks for the three views on the stream for watching. Um, Thanks to our sponsors, and especially today to Nagaro for the location and catering. You had already the enjoy here with some drinks and 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 uh, sandwiches. And uh, we also thank Tieto for sponsoring the .NET Devs Austria. If your company or do you or you want to sponsor us, or you want to host a meetup like Nagaro today. Please talk with us. We have some general information of the of the website, but simply come to us. Us is Martin, Raul, and me. Talk with us or, or write us after the after the meetup. The next meetups we have already some planned. The next will be on the 31st of March at Green Tube. We don't have yet a topic. Uh, the April April meetup will be at Tieto. We also need here a topic, and the May May uh, meetup. Yeah, we need a topic, and we have an idea for a location, but it's not yet fixed. And you see, we are needing topics. <laughs> we would like to know what wo you would like to know about .NET. Come to us, talk with us, or create a GitHub issue on this repo, link and QR code, I'm getting better, um, and, and, and give us feedback what topics you want to hear. We, when we know this, we can then search for speakers or prepare the talks ourselves. But if we don't get feedback, you get the content we want to talk about. <laughs> yeah. So we would like to, to, to present you topics that is interesting for you. We have some stuff about Blazor, Packet, Node Time, and there are others. So this is really important for us that we bring you the content you want. And one thing also, please spread the word that we are existing. Invite colleagues, invite friends, invite customers, retweet and tweet our Twitter communications, and invite everybody to the meetups where you know it, he has to do, he or she has to do with, with .NET. That we are getting more and more people and, and, and share more knowledge in our group. Good. That was from my side. Now, Richie, our today's speaker with Viamock.net. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Okay, if I put it here? No, 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 you have to split it on. Keep it on. Okay. Is it okay like that? Great. So, th thank you all for showing up. Um, it's a pleasure for us to um, host this .NET meetup group th for the first time. Um, the topic today is Wiremock. First of all, uh, I want to ask you a question. Who already heard about Wiremock? I guess everyone who is related to me already heard about it. Who heard about Wiremock? Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. Um, 
So the next question about Wiremock.net, which is a little bit different, is obvious then. Right, you, you don't need this then. So just about me, a little introduction that you know who I am. I studied at the University of Applied Science Technicum. Um, while I was studying there, um, I worked at uh, Bivin as a Java developer first. Uh, no, f first as a .NET developer, then as a Java developer. 2017, I switched to Anacon as a Java developer um, and .NET developer. And now I'm um, working in test automation. And 2018, uh, Nagaro merged with Anacon or Anacon with Nagaro, however you want to see that. Um, but I'm still doing the same, of course. Um, and from the test automation side, we found a very interesting um, use case for Viamoc. And I want to show you this use case today and something about uh, Viamoc. First of all, I want to, s <clears throat> to give you the problem that we were facing uh, at this project. Uh, we, have the, we, have, we, have, we have a test class, we have a website, <clears throat> we have a backend, and we have a local service. This, this local service was running on a local machine. So these are desktop machines uh, at the customer's uh, shops. And there is a local service running with a dedicated hardware, for example, a barcode scanner, a printer, whatever. So there is no way to bring this local service uh, on other machines. So the workflow is we did the tests, in this case with Selenium. The website was calling localhost um, to the barcode scanner back and uh, to the backend, and they reported back the results. Um, so the problem is, uh, it's very hard to automate this, especially if you want to automate it in a cloud, um, which we want to do because we want to run this nightly and we don't want to set up one of these desktop PCs, which is really a desktop PC as you, if you Google desktop PC, it looks like that exactly. So uh, yeah, we want to get rid of this system, uh, but what is the solution for that one? And it's Wiremock. I worked uh, as a Java developer, I already worked with Wiremock. So I knew this technology from there. And this is a technology, as far as I know, it comes, it, it comes from uh, the, the Java development. Uh, the first thing I stumbled uh, across was Wiremock is not Wiremock. There is the Wiremock.org, which is the standalone Java version of Wiremock. And there is a Java, uh, there's the .NET version, Wiremock.net, and the domain is not Wiremock.net, that's where there's a space, because you, you come to something else, but not to Wiremock.net if you enter this domain. This is a GitHub repository, and uh, the URL is on the slides, and the slides will, of course, be provided after that in the Meetup group somewhere. Um, so this was one of the first mistakes I, I did when I was uh, researching Wiremock for .NET. Um, there is no... Uh, there, there's no way to use the Wiremock, which is used in Java for the .NET group. But uh, let's, let's take a look at a normal test scenario that we have. We have a test class, we have a service, <coughs> where we, uh, which is our subject on the test. We have some, some data access layer, some service, and of course you need an interface. Uh, and that's our setup for the test class. Um, in a normal scenario, um, we have an external service. In this case, let's say it's an HTTP service, uh, which has a database with real data that can be on test, on beta, whatever. I mean, you normally don't test on production. I mean, some people do that. Um, so normally, you have the test class. This goes to the interface of the data access layer or service layer. Um, it goes to the service that calls the database and the, the data going back to the, to the service layer. There is one big problem here. And that's the external dependency. So you, you can't control inside your test what's inside this database. In this case, it's five customer. But, but if someone puts some data in there or deletes some data, your test will fail because your assertion in the test is based on the data that you get from a database. I guess everyone agrees that this is not good for testing. So what's the, what's the normal solution for that one? Right. It's mocking. So there are plenty of mocking frameworks. I just pointed out some. With mock you is, I guess, one of the most famous one. Um, <laughs> so how does a mock work? You replace the data access layer or the service layer with the mock. I guess that's not new. Or is, it, is this new for someone? OK, great. So you set it up in the mock, and then the mock is um, um, getting the data, sending the, the data back without any external 
um, dependencies. Th this is good if you have a unit test. This is great, but if you have some kind of integration test, then you have a problem because just imagine you have a second service and you communicate with the service and both your service that you're testing and the other service is depending on the same external service. Because uh, the external service can't access your mock. So, um, and if you want to have consistent data between uh, this service and your mock, that's not possible with a mocking framework. There's also a solution for that one. Someone can everyone guess it? It's service virtualization. Um, when I discovered service virtualization first, I talked to a colleague and he asked me, do you know service virtualization? And I said, yes, I know server virtualization. Um, it was a quite interesting discussion at this point in time. Um, there's a difference between service virtualization and server virtualization. This means you provide a fake HTTP service and there are some tools. Wiremock is, by the way, one of them. So the original uh, uh, .org Wiremock is one of the service virtualization tools, CA, service vpro, presentis, it's also some service virtualizations. So how, how does it work? You have the service virtualization, you have full control of it. There is a web interface normally. You set the uh, response that you accept that, that, that you expect inside the, the web interface and then we have this normal workflow. If you have an external service, it can also access the same uh, the same uh, service virtualization. So that's fine. The only problem we are having is the web interface. You have to control the data which you get inside the tests on an external web interface. I mean, there, there are plenty of reasons why I don't want to have that. For example, if you're not controlling the web interface, if someone else puts the data in there, or if it's two months ago, you have to look up which data are in there. So there is no way that you see inside the test um, what data do you expect from your service. And it's way easier to have it inside the test. The other way is you can't set up new mappings that easily. Uh, so if you want to have one call is, is responding with a 200 code and the other one is a 500 just to also test um, maybe some, some uh, fail examples. The solution for that one is Wiremock, at least in our, um, in our project it was Wiremock. Uh, and how that works, I guess you can guess it. From the test class, you can control Wiremock. It's like an external service, it's like the service utilization. You can, you can call it and it goes through the service and also an, an other service can um, call it. So what is Wiremock? It's an HTTP uh, mocking framework, which is controlled from the code. I've prepared a short demo. Um, the demo links are also at the end of the slides. There is a GitHub uh, repository. They should be public, I hope. Um, so I've prepared more uh, um, demos than I will show right now. So if you want to um, take a closer look at them, you can you can uh, do that after, after the talk. Um, so just just as an um, our example API that we use for our request. So I will call this Wimog now many times and um, we just have an example API which is a user controller and th this, th this is not uh, th this, this is not the important part of this uh, talk. It's just a very easy controller which has some standard uh, values and it returns those values. And if you provide, Let's say first name, last name, then it overrides those values and returns you these values. We just take a look at the get and the post method. We won't uh, use any more than that. Can, can you read that? Is it, is it okay or should I make it a little bit bigger? Um, is it okay? Okay, great. So um, let's start this, this API that you just see what, is, um, what it looks like. I, I have set up postman for that just to show you um, how it looks like. So we have localhost, it's running on port 5000 in this case, and we have the API user and we have some, if we don't use any parameters and we call the API, we will see here are the default values and if we override those values, uh, we get those overwritten values. I guess it's pretty, pretty simple. So um, I'm not gonna call this one first, so let me just show you. The wire mock. Here it is. So this is our first example. These are just just to show you the setup of the test class. We have a simple logging framework. This is just so that I don't have to go into the debug mode, so that we have some some logging output. We're using Serilog in this case. 
Um, and here are just some uh, calls with fluent URL. So this is a GET call with no parameters. This is a POST call with no parameters, GET with parameters, and so on. So I just run this test um, just to show you what's the outcome. And here you see you get we get those parameters. Um, now we will stop the service. So pretending it's not here. So where's the? So let's run it again, and now it should fail because um, there's no service running in the background. Fine. Okay, great. So, and now we will start with Wiremark. That was just a pure service call if we use the external uh, service reference. You start Wiremark with, uh, with with this line. You have the Fluent Mock server start, and you just provide the port you want to start it on. It's running on localhost. Um, you have this domain kind of the main domain driven um, syntax of this fluent syntax you just say given and you, you provide a path this is it this is the easiest way now this is without any parameters you provide the path and you uh, say what, what is the, the response code and what are the bodies uh, what does the body look like so we have the same object here we have this user data and this is returned let's take a look um, and this one Now just returns the Walter via mock Walter via data, which is coming from the via mock, and it's not coming from the real API. I mean, we we, we shut it down earlier. Um, so th this is just a simple um, get call. This is with some more options, like you can you can also put in header or you can put in a, a delay. I just run this one that you see it. So it takes uh, more than five seconds to to respond in this case so you can um, simulate some some slower apis if you need that you see it took six seconds here the other one was one second um, let's go on you can also um, say we start with code 500 in this case so that you can mock uh, some some missing services or whatever you need because that's sometimes also very important in, in test cases. The post is looking similar. You just say using post uh, and then you have, you simulate a post uh, request. I'm I'm not running all these these requests because this I guess it's uh, this boring and you can imagine how it looks like. Um, we just uh, look at the more um, complicated stuff like this parameter it, it doesn't look so complicated in the beginning because you just uh, expect a parameter Wolfgang and if you provide it and if you run that one um, where is it here we get this this um, uh, this this response from the server <clears throat> but if we run the same we expect this parameter Wolfgang but we don't provide it uh, there is something called allow partial mapping and this is if this is set on false and it's by default null and this is false um, it's acting like in a strict mode so in this case it says there is no you can see it is red there is no answer because it's a 404 i guess yeah it's it's not found this says there is no mapping found so from from the um, default uh, setting of wiremock uh, it's just returning exact matchings this is important because it drives me crazy in the beginning when there was just some some little thing and it's also case sensitive <laughs> that that's not that doesn't make it easier so uh to prevent that or if you want to get rid of that one and you you don't know if this parameter is expected or not uh the simplest way is just to allow partial mapping to allow partial mapping you need another constructor so not the one that takes only the, the integer value of the port you just uh, provide uh, the Wiremock settings and in the Wiremock setting you can set a lot more than that and we have a, a standalone version in the end uh, you will see more than this just these partial mappings uh, this this these two um, values but in this case we set the port again and we say partial mapping is true and if you do the same call with this expected parameter and we don't provide this parameter we will get an answer because it always returns an answer if there is a mapping and it returns the closest one to your request and it's based on the priority uh, if there are two like same close or whatever that's called uh, so I guess you can imagine there is an answer um, so that's that's a real cool feature so if you always want to have some some um, 
some response, you turn it on. If you say, I know exactly how my call should look like and there should be, uh, it's not available if the, the call is wrong, then you can set it to strict mode or just to the default mode. Um, you can also use some wildcards inside the, the, uh, the path. I, I guess it's not so... Uh, so interesting, you can also set some wildcards inside the parameters and I will show you this um, request matching. On the GitHub page there is a small documentation, I guess I opened it twice now. There is a small documentation about uh, some of the settings that you can do and for example these request matchers. There are uh, a lot of matchers like the XPath matcher, the exact matcher, C sharp code matcher. You, you can go into that. If you need some of these matchers, you can um, you can have a look here. We have the wildcard matcher, which just uses this asterisk as a wildcard. Um, and then you can provide something like um, you say it should start with W and A, and the rest is yeah. And Walter is is matching this um, this pattern. Which just take a look. Yeah, on the screen. So. Now let's take a close look at priority mapping. I make it a little bit bigger for you that you can see it better. We have two mappings in this case, and the priority mapping is something. The priority is something that you always need when you're dealing uh, with um, service utilizations, because if you have a request which is uh, matching two requests, you need to decide somehow which one should be returned. Of course, let's let's have a let's have a look at these two requests. We have. The, the, the request to the user and the username is Walter in both cases and we provide the username Walter. So both of the of these uh, mappings would uh, fit. So I guess it's random if you have the same priority, which, what is returned or the first mapping. But if you set the priority, um, then you can um, decide which one should be sent if, if, there is, if they are both the same. The lower the value, the higher the priority. I guess that's as always. You can see it here, priority A, priority B. So in this case, it should return priority B. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, it's returning priority A. Sorry, it should return A, of course. And if we change the priority, this is a good example where you shouldn't use comments in your code. Um, if we run that, We have priority B now, so this is a good way. If, if you if you can stack up your your mappings somehow, if you have a logical order of your mappings, you can prioritize them. So let's go on. Um, reset mapping is also interesting. You can this Wiremark has a reset mappings um, uh, method. So whenever you call that, the mappings are gone, all of them. So if you have if you use it multiple times and you want to get rid of old mappings, you can get rid of them. Uh, I guess you can imagine how it works. So there was this, it's the same as before. You have priority 50 and 100. And if I remove the 50 before, then the 100 priority B is is returned, of course. Um, and now one of the most interesting parts about Wiremock, it's the log entries. Um, I'm going to start it here. And this time in debug mode, so we can look at the log entries. Every mocking framework that you know, I guess, has some kind of verification. So you, the, the mocking framework knows how often it was called and what were the parameters it was called with. And Wiremock has exactly the same. Uh, so so if you take a look at this, um, at these logging uh, entries, you can go to the Wiremock server and then you just uh, open the log entries. And here you see there are three entries. Um, maybe we should have taken a look at the at the code first. <laughs> so we have those uh, entry which has a, a wildcard in the path, which expecting just the first name, and the second one uh, is expecting a first name and a second name. And we also turned on partial mapping, so there is always a return value. Let's take a look at the first call, which is uh, WA, just WA, so none of these mappings really fits, so the partial mapping kicks in and uh, returns the one with the lower priority. 
Um, and also, uh, the, the, the second call is just the first name, and the third call is first name and last name, which is provided here. So although this priority is, is lower, uh, since both parameters match, this should be the last call. So let's take a look at the, um, at the values now. So the first one, here you see each mapping has a GUID. You can also remove mappings by GUID. So you can you cannot reset all mappings. You can also remove uh, specific mappings. This is especially interesting if you use with um, with uh, local mappings on the hard drive. I will show you that with the um, with the standalone version of of Wiremock. So. If you if you see here request match, you see everything about the request. What how does the request look like? It was a, it was an, a get request. It was local host. You, you can query everything you need. You also get the response. Can can, can you read that? Is it is it readable from the last line from the last seats? Yeah. Okay. Great. So you see the the body data. You get here the data that was um, responded. So you have everything that you need. You can also there is something called request match result. And this tells you if it was a perfect match. And as you see, the WA is not a perfect match. Uh, that's why it says false, because it didn't match one of the mappings exactly. But it was it was uh, captured by the partial mapping. This is exactly. And there is a score, which is uh, how close it was to the real mapping. Uh, to be honest, I didn't went into these values at all. But if you're interesting, um, uh, if you're interested, I'm pretty sure there's some kind of logic behind those numbers. Um, for example, if you go for the second one, you see that uh, the, the um, is perfect match is true because there was really a mapping which uh, was exactly for this for this call. Great. Um, yeah, this is a great opportunity to just um, um, verify your your data inside the test. And the last last thing I've prepared is the options call. I, I've, it's nothing special. It's just the method option of the HTTP protocol. But this is something that we came across uh, during our testings. These option calls, some frameworks use these option calls before they do, do the normal call. This was some kind of Node.js framework. So they do the option call and then they do the real call. And we haven't been aware of that. <laughs> so all calls were failed because there was no mapping for the option call. And there is no using options so if you if you see all these usings there is no options um, so and i guess this method wasn't working at the version half a year ago when we used it there were some updates on this repository um, and this any method was also not working so our solution was to remove all of it have no using then it was capturing really everything and if you say partial mapping true it works fine I've tested it yesterday. This options works and also this any method works for this option call. Just be aware that some of these frameworks and the developers were not aware that they are sending those option calls because the framework was doing it by its own. So if you're on the other side, if you're responding, uh, I guess the .NET Core is doing it automatically, this option call uh, in the background. But if, if you're mocking it, you have to take care of that. Okay, so that's it for the, for the Viamock uh, demo. I just want to give you to go on with the example from the um, uh, from our real project that we had. So, um, if you can remember this example from before, we had this. We just replaced the, the local the local machine with Wiremock, so we can control the test and then the test that was running as expected. There's also a standalone version of Wiremock, and there is a, a nugget called standalone. I will take a look at, at, the, at the very end of this presentation, what it is. This Wiremock, uh, I've written it my own. It's, it's just a, a um, console application starting Wiremock with a an, with an while loop. Um, so we, had, we were facing the problem that we had manual testers. And these uh, desktop computers were sitting in a special room. Uh, at this company and it was a server room it was very loud it was very hot in there so no one wants to sit there long and also these computers were very busy because other people were testing those services which were running there as well so it was not easy for the testers for the manual testers to run this uh, setup and test all this stuff so we came up with a solution 
why not use Wiremog for that as well? So what we did is we uh, replaced those uh, desktop computers. We, we went to these desktop computers. We uh, switched this local service to another port, let's say 4,000 instead of 5,000. We uh, started Wiremog in proxy mode I will or record mode. You will see later what that means. And then the testers just made the request. It goes to the Wiremog. The Wiremog goes to the real service. It, they, they were using those scanners to get real data. The data were sent back. Wiremog writes this mapping down and it's, it was going to the website. Um, so these this, this, uh, files that were written to the hard drive, we, we just saved them, gave them the, um, to, to, the, to the testers and on their local machines, they just uh, started Wiremog on the play mode, put those files in and then they were reading the data from, the, from this uh, mappings and that's it. So uh, we got rid of all this uh, local machine stuff by just using Wiremog and we didn't have to manually create all these requests inside the code because it, Wiremog was doing all of it for us. Um, these are the two uh, links. This is also my last slide, so I will just show you the Wiremog standalone, um, how it works. I, I just show you the, the standalone version from um, from the GitHub repo. Here is like you can run it as a standalone process. There's also a way to run it in, in Asia as well. So this is this is nothing else than having those uh, standalone app and this has a wrapper for the command line arguments. So you can use these arguments, which are the settings. Uh, so, so there's an argument parser in it. That's the Wiremog standalone. So if you go to NuGet, you see standalone, it's exactly that. If you, if you want to use that, in my case, I didn't want it because those testers are not aware of which parameters to provide Wiremog. I want to have the parameters in a separate file. I gave them the file and say, here, run it like it is right now. I will show you this, this standalone version. Uh, it's also on a public um, GitHub repository. Let's just take a look at the, at the settings file. There are two modes, play and record. So I came up with these values. Uh, we have the URL, which Wiremog is, is mocking. We have the proxy URL. So this is the URL of the service we are um, proxying to. And there's something called blacklist headers. So you can uh, take out headers, uh, which, are, um, which shouldn't be recorded. Um, so this, the first lines are just reading this, uh, the app settings file. Let's start with the play mode because it's easier to explain. Uh, we just start this, we have this, the settings, we just create the settings and here we start the server. Uh, we use the URL from the, from the settings file. We say allow partial mappings true because we want to have, we want to have always a return value. This admin interface is something where you can control via mock from outside using HTTP calls. Um, but you have to provide, uh, you have to set the username and the password, and then you have to provide it in the calls. If, if you need that, you can do that, of course, but for, for us, it was not uh, really necessary. This should be changed to false. This is just, uh, this was just in the beginning and never taken out as it should have been. We have read static mappings. This means you read mappings from the hard drive. And the other one, watch static ma mappings, is you can change those files well, Wiremog is running and it will react and it will change the, the mappings inside the, the Wiremog and the logger just to see the output. Let's take a look at the recorder, how that one works. So um, we have partial mapping and all this stuff on as well. The idea behind this is if there was already a mapping for that one, it should use the mapping instead the real service. So the proxy should already uh, fake the already known um, answers or requests. The only difference is we have this record, uh, proxy and record settings. We set the proxy URL, so where it should go to. We say save mappings. This just means it saves the mappings inside the memory of, the, of this uh, via mock. Save to file is the option to really write a file out of it. And we blacklist the headers. So if you say have some headers, you say, I don't want to capture them, you can exclude them. Let's just uh, have a quick look how it works. We, we go for our um, API. Launch settings, we change the port to 4000. As said before, we're just caring about HTTP. By the way, uh, I've skipped this for this presentation, but there's also an, an SS, uh, you can also do HTTPS with Wiremog. There's an option for that. Uh, I guess you can figure out your own how that works. Um, so we have those uh, local, um, this local API. If you can remember, we tried this in the beginning. So let's just try port 5000. 
is not working because there's nothing listening on port 5000, port 4000. This is our actual service now. So uh, we have the Wimax standalone. It's just these two files, the standalone and the app settings. Let's just take a look at the app settings. So we have, we, we go on port 5000 and we proxy to port 4000. We are on record mode and we just exclude some headers. Okay, let's start this uh, standalone. You see the settings here, by the way, also um, when, you, when you start the server. So when we go to port uh, 5000 again, you will see, you will get an answer. That, that answer is coming from the real service and Wiremog also wrote down those mappings. So here you see that's the syntax of the mappings. It's, yeah, it's just a JSON file with all the um, matches and it, it, it's creating those matches on its own. Um, yeah, and here's the response. So if I stop the service now, so it's not running anymore, I also stop the Wiremox server and I change it to play mode now. Um, let's just switch that to the play mode. Let's just say play. Uh, let's close it here. We still got this response. Um, and we start the Swimax server again. So that's it. Um, if we go for port 5000 now, we will get an answer. And this answer is coming from, from via mock. Uh, if we change it, let's just in some random characters. Um, since we have this watch static mappings, uh, this is working so I can change it on the fly, hopefully. Yeah. So that's the standalone version. As I told you, I mean, it, it's just 20 lines of code. So but there's a GitHub repo <laughs> if you, uh, if, if you want to use that. I guess that, that's a very cool tool if you have local or if, if you just want to get rid of some uh, of, of some HTTP um, services. It's an easy way to, to record it. You just record all the, the necessary stuff that you need and then you just did it on play mode and then you have everything you need. That's it from my side. Um, if there are any questions, feel free to ask them now or we can talk afterwards. I will be around at having some beer. Uh, no, to be honest, I haven't tried it out on a Mac. Uh, I was thinking about making the presentation on a Mac, but since um, I wasn't sure, I mean, it should work perfectly, .NET Core with a Mac, uh, but I haven't tried it out yet, but it should. Well? Yeah, yeah, it, it should run because that's .NET Core. So yeah, it should run. Unless there is some, some special features or bugs or whatever you want to call it, that's not running on Mac, but. Thank you, Richie. So, so, let's wait a moment. So, so, Richie, thanks for the talk. Um, as every speaker, you get our custom uh, .NET uh, Devs AT Vienna Meetup coaster. So if you held a talk, you get also one. Only people who are here in front of you. Um... <laughs> okay, ra 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 for, for the for the streamer stream viewers, Ra, ra was slow with taking pictures. <laughs> Good. Um, thank you again you to, you, to you all for coming. And thanks to our sponsors, Nagaro for the location catering. There's still something left for you. Um, thanks to Tieto for sponsoring .NET Devs. Again, call to action. If your company wants to sponsor us or you personally, or you want to host a meetup, please talk with us. Uh, some information, general information, but talk with Martin, Raul, or me. Um, short reminder, 
um, for the next meetups. So the next is end of March, a little bit longer until the next one, six weeks or so. And if you have more uh, uh, information when the April and May meetup will be, we, we will put this on meetup, on the meetup event page. Again, one, one reminder, um, please tell us what, you t what topics you would like to hear. <clears throat> I put all of the links in the meantime in the meetup event, so you have them also there. Uh, yeah, here's the one with the with the QR code. So, again, please spread the word, invite colleagues, retweet us, um, take everybody from the office here. Um, again, the, the QR codes, but you have the links also in the meeting. And one last slide, we want to hear your feedback. So, about today's meetup. Um, so this is the one QR code you should now uh, take and 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 scan and take a small survey. It's only ten short questions that would help us uh, to improve, further improve on the meetups and everything. Good. I let this slide here. Um, thanks to the stream viewers, uh, we will now uh, stop streaming. And locally here we will watch the Microsoft 365 Developer Day. It's about this dual screen experience with the new Surface devices. A uh, link where you can find the stream is in the Meetup event. Good. Then have a nice evening and hope you to see you all in the next Meetup.